So hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is San Shadi. This is Honey. Let's talk. Where we say when we talk, we make it better. So there's something that I've been thinking about the past couple of months, like five months. Okay, I've been thinking about this thing. It's been bothering me. I feel like we just need to talk about it. I don't know if you've noticed that there are so many breakups currently. There are so many people just breaking up, no? There are so many people just separating, other people are just divorcing, and it's been bothering me. And I'm, I've just been thinking about it. I'm like, what's going on? Is it that marriage is not working? Is it that relationship are not working? And then, on the flip side is that there are so many other people that are actually getting married. Mm. Very interesting, right? So I thought of just coming in and just to share with you guys some questions that you need to ask your future husband. Okay, these are questions for ladies to ask their future husband. And this question will help you identify if this is really, really what you need. So the big question that I've been asking myself is this. What happens between, yes, I do, you know, what happens between that and I can't take it anymore? What happens to the commitment till death to now you're like, man, I will not wait for death. I want out. And I don't know if you've ever thought about that, especially for those people who are seriously dating right now and are looking to getting married in the next few months or a few years. I don't know if you've ever thought about it, like really, really thought about that. And today I want to give you some questions that will help you as a lady to actually identify if this is the man that you want to be married and I know relationships are different. I know that I am personally, I am different. And this is just my opinion. And I want you to take it with a pinch of salt and ask yourself, is this something that I can adopt in my life and actually try to work out things with my partner so that we can actually have the best marriage ever? In other words, that if we get married today, that we will, it will be till death do us part. So again, Questions are a great way to identify future and potential conflict areas. So when you ask each other questions, it's a great opportunity for you to say, Oh man, hmm. the way you have answered that question, I, I, I think we might have a problem with it. Or, hey, this is how I thought about that question. And, and now me and you, we're thinking about this thing from different perspective. And it is important for us to actually discuss it before we even get married. And today, I'm going to give you 10 questions. I've divided them into three categories. So category number one is the questions that helps you build trust. These are questions that are, you know, it's not about breakup. These are questions that will help you actually build trust with each other. They will grow you together. They will build a zeal and a passion for each other, okay? And I'm going to give you, those are going to be four questions. And then I'm going to give you another set of four questions that will help you identify your partner's worldview. How do they view the world? And there are things that you need to actually understand, actually the way they think about things, so that you guys will not be surprised when this thing happened in your relationship and now you decide, you know, I want out. And the third, the third category uh, is going to be two questions that will help you understand how your partner thinks about faith and religion and why this is important. And let me begin by saying this, guys. Let me begin by saying this. Everybody who gets married, no one gets married with an intention to break up a marriage. No one gets married with an intention, oh, we're going to just be with you for the next three weeks and then, you know, I'm going to just divorce you. No, no one gets married with that. People get married with, you know, great intentions to just stay together forever until death do you part. But somehow, people get married and then they realize this is not it for them. Or they get married to someone who, when they were dating, this person was this kind of a person. And then when they got married, it seems like the person changed. Or you got married in some weird circumstance. And then when you now married and things have settled down, you realize, oh, this is not it for me. So no one gets into marriage with an intention of actually divorcing. All of us want to get married and stay in marriage till death, death do us part. But somehow, there are many people right now who are leaving each other. And it's important for you to prepare well, especially for those who are actually thinking about 
marriage. So here goes the 10 questions. The first set of four questions is this. Number one is very simple. It's a very simple question. It's a cliche question, but it's very, very important. This is the question. What attracted you to me? What about me that really attracts you to me? What about me that really attracts you to me? Chances are there are many people who are attracted to a person because of the way they look. And there's nothing wrong with that. Okay? There are other people who are attracted to a person because of the way they dress. Okay? There are people who are attracted to a person the way they carry themselves, the way they lead. Or there are people who are attracted to a person because of the way that person makes them feel. Okay? And the question that comes in, which is a bigger question, is this reason enough for me to be with you? Is this reason enough for me to be with you? That if you are attracted to me because of the way I look, is this reason enough for us to be together? Or if you are attracted to me because of the way I make you feel, what happens when I stop making you feel that way? Would you still be attracted to me? Because this is, this is guys, this is, this is, just give me a minute. This is really important, okay? Because there are many people who get married and then they realize they're not feeling the things they used to feel or they get married and that the person changes, you know, they start, you know, maybe they get into a new level of, um, you know, of, of their career and now they have changed the way they, they, they dressed and it started, it started becoming an issue with your partner because they're like, you're no longer attractive to me because I got attracted to you because of the way you dressed. And it's important for you to understand why is your partner attracted to you? And there's nothing wrong with the way you dress. There's nothing wrong being attracted to someone because of the way they look. It's just a bigger question you need to ask yourself is, is that enough to actually sustain you when you're married? So the question number two is very, very important. What does it mean to be a husband? Okay. <clears throat> Very important, okay? It will build your trust. You will get to know, oh, this is the man. This man will take care of me. This man knows exactly what it means to actually be a husband. They have actually, you know, thought about it. They have actually researched. They have actually, you know, worked on themselves because now they will no longer just be a boyfriend. They are going to be something more. And that is a husband. Do you even know what it means to be a husband? Okay, and it's important for you to ask them that question. And that question will help you actually build trust with them. And you're like, oh, hmm, this guy knows exactly what it means to be a husband. He has never been a husband, but at least he has an idea of what it means to be a husband. There are many people think that being a husband is, okay, providing. Mm -hmm. Good, that's good. You know that you should be providing. Uh, they know that being a husband is you need to be, you know, you're the head of the house. What does that really even mean? Okay. And now you get married and you're like, uh, you don't have a job. And you're like, if I thought that being a husband is it's only providing, then it's going to be very hard for you guys to actually cope because you'll be like frustrated and you really don't know. But the, question, the big question is, do you even know what it means to be a husband? Okay, and you for a lady, let me know in the comment. Do you even know what it means to be a wife? You've never been a wife, but you, do you have an idea what it means? Are there things that you're saying, when I get married, this is what it means to be a wife? Okay, question number three. Very important question. What is your take? <clears throat> Very important question. What is your take on submission? What is your take on submission? When you say that women are supposed to submit, you as a man, what do you think that means? Ah, that's a very good question. Uh, what does it really mean to actually submit? And I, I think my wife should ask me that question because I have an idea what I think submission should look like, you know? And, and for many of you, you already have an idea what it means. But when you share this with your partner, maybe they have a different view of what submission really means. And I wish uh, in the future we're going to do a video on that, what it really means to be submissive. Question number four, <clears throat> very important question again. In case of a conflict that cannot be resolved between me and you, what are we going to do? Because you're the head of the house, because you'll be the head of the house, what do you think, how will you guide me to actually resolve the conflict? If we have a conflict,
that cannot be resolved or we are unable now to resolve, it has been going for years, for months or even for years, what do you think we should do? Because of being raised from different families, there, there is a way that someone deals with stuff. Okay, There's, some of you maybe deals with stuff by just being quiet. Others deal with stuff by talking about them. Others deal with stuff by just you know, involving someone else in the conversation. And it is important for the two of you now to actually come and say, sit down and have this conversation. Say, hey, in case in the future we have a conflict and we cannot solve this conflict, what do you think we should do? And because you're the man of the house, how will you guide me to actually solve that issue? And a bonus, a bonus question on this first category is this. Do you know when I am not okay? Do you know when I'm not okay? Do you know when I'm not okay? And what do you think I need when I'm not okay? Do you know when I'm not okay? No, when I'm mad and I'm not okay, do you even know when I'm not okay? It is important for you guys to know. It is important for you as a lady to know that your man actually understands and knows when you're mad or when you're not okay. And actually they know what they need to do to actually make you better. Let me tell you an example for me and my wife. When my wife is mad, when my wife is not okay, my wife wants to talk. Okay, she wants, she wants us to just stop everything and sit down and have a conversation. Okay, for me on the other hand, that, that's not me. When I am not okay, I just want to chill first. I want to pull back first. But I need to understand that when my wife is not okay, it's not about me. Okay, it might be I'm the reason, but I should think about this thing from her perspective first. I should ask myself, now that my wife is mad, Hmm, what does my wife need? My wife needs us to talk, so I'll go and tell her, honey, can you sit down? Let, let's just talk. I, I think you're not okay. I, I feel you're not okay. I see that you are behaving this way, and I, and I think you're not okay. Can we just talk? And that will be the best time for my wife because she loves it. She enjoys it. So when I think about her first, in, when it comes to such a situation, she really enjoys. So those are five Five questions with a bonus, okay? Five questions that will really build trust. Let me tell you something. When my wife knows that I know when she's mad and I know exactly what she needs at that particular point, then she will be confident to actually just be real with me. She will know that I just need to be real. If I'm mad, I'm mad. I don't have to pretend. My husband knows when I'm mad and it's really, really important. So those are five questions to ask that will help you build trust.